Hey everyone, and welcome to the 2021 review of Kaiserreich. I've reviewed Kaiserreich back in 2019 and had a lot of praise for it. So this is a chance to go back and see if the mod has changed in any way, and if any significant improvements have been made to the formula that worked so well in 2019. Let's get started. The lore of the mod has not changed, but for those of you who are new to the mod, here is a quick overview of what Kaiserreich is about. The year is 1936, and we enter a very different world in which the German Empire has won the Great War, and is the dominant power in Europe, Africa, and parts of Asia. While on the surface things seem to be great, the German victory had many ripple effects that significantly changed the politics of other countries, such as France, Britain, Austria, and Russia. For example, both France and Britain are now ruled by syndicalist parties, with rival exiled governments awaiting the time to strike. Russia is holding on to a fledgling semi-authoritarian democracy, and Austria-Hungary is on the verge of breaking apart. Kaiserreich has a very well-developed lore, so it would be impossible for me to cover all of it in this video but you can always learn more about it as you play or on the Kaiserreich Viki. The biggest success of Kaiserreich and its complex lore is that it really succeeds in creating an atmosphere of urgency and uncertainty, and sucks you in which makes fighting a war in the mod not just another boring war fought for no reason, but an ideological struggle and a struggle for the survival of your people. With the world being so different from the vanilla game, let's take a look at the world map and some of the changes that have been done to it. Kaiserreich, of course, features all the standard map changes you would expect from a total conversion mod. There are plenty of new nations to play, and the layout of the map is very different from the vanilla map. The former French and British colonies in Africa are now divided between Germany and the exiled French Republican government, headed by Philippe Piton. China is of course divided between the various warlords and among what are known as the legation cities. These are port cities that are governed by western governments and in the mod represent the interests of these governments in China. The British presence in India has been greatly reduced with only the Dominion of India representing the interests of the former empire on the subcontinent. The game also adds a number of straits that control the movement of navies, such as the one between Sicily and mainland Italy, another one in Djibouti, as well as another strait blocker in Turkey. State changes are also present, and the developers seem to have changed only what is necessary. For example, some parts of Africa have been modified significantly, while others have remained as they were in the vanilla game. That's all regarding the map changes, now let's take a look at the graphics of Kaiserreich. Kaiserreich is a mix of spectacular graphical additions and some odd leftovers from previous versions of the mod. Focus icons are beautiful and most of the focus trees in the mod will include unique focus icons that really capture the essence of what each focus is all about. Same goes for leader portraits. All the countries in the mod have their own unique leader portraits and seem to have them for all the ideologies as well. In all the time that I played the mod, I haven't encountered a generic leader portrait. Occasionally, you may encounter a portrait which might be of lower quality than the others, but that obviously has to do a lot with the original pictures. Still, for most of the time, you will encounter beautiful portraits for all the leaders in the mod. Decision icons and national ideas will also have unique icons, and those are on the level. So overall, the mod features a very pleasant graphical experience while staying true to the look and feel of the base game. Another graphical change that deserves attention are the ideology icons. These have been changed from my previous review, and the change is really impressive. Each ideology has a unique icon that really makes it easy to identify. These icons are a real work of art, and the one responsible for them has done an outstanding job. One aspect which is yet to improve are the advisor pictures, which are black and white and seem very out of place. Hopefully these will change in the future, since right now all the advisor portraits are a bit bland and none of them really stand out, which is odd because the mod puts a heavy emphasis on its characters. Alright, with that out of the way, let's see what new gameplay elements the mod offers. 
Kaiserreich belongs to the category of mods that make only minor adjustments to the gameplay of the base game, but these adjustments are well planned and executed and improve the experience without changing it too much unnecessarily. The mod has extensive focus trees for all major countries, such as Germany, Russia, Britain, France, the Ottoman Empire, the United States and others, but also features extensive focus trees for small nations across the board such as Lithuania, Cuba, Nicaragua, and many others. The scope of the work put into the mod is really admirable, and you are guaranteed to get a unique experience with each new nation you play. The mod has also well preserved the pacing of the game, with all nations building up their forces for the new Weltkrieg, and small conflicts erupting that ultimately lead to a global war that spreads all over the world, and this time not even South America can escape the flames. While there are some balance issues here and there, in most cases it is rare to find yourself in an impossible situation due to making the wrong choice. One key feature of the mod introduces a limit on the number of divisions a country can have. I suspect this feature was introduced to improve performance, but also makes a lot of sense, and really forces you to plan out your armies instead of just creating as many divisions as possible. While this limit is not mandatory and you can surpass it, doing so will result in penalties that will reduce the effectiveness of your entire army. The mod also introduces a couple of quality of life features that help with keeping the player up to date with what's going on in the world. Diplomatic alerts will make it much more clear when countries join one of the factions. There is also a dedicated button that shows you the members of every faction, a feature that is really missing in the base game. There is also a feature to reduce the news event spam, which is very nice since those can become overbearing once a flood of them pops up. You can either disable all of them, enable all of them, or only show those that are concerned with your immediate surroundings. One thing that I would like to be changed is the amount of volunteers countries can send. Since right now that amount is very similar to the base game, and in my opinion makes it really hard for countries who are just sitting around not engaged in any war, to make a difference in foreign conflicts. It would be nice if the cap on volunteers was just a bit higher, perhaps even only for non-AI countries, to avoid the AI flooding other countries with volunteers. Another issue that I mentioned previously and is still there is the insane amount of advisors many of the countries can hire. I'm all for variety, but what is the point of having so many of them if you can't really hire any of them? It just makes a huge list of advisors obsolete and confusing. The mod also features 10 ideologies and while I hope that most of them are needed due to the lore of the mod, I can't say that I had any meaningful engagement with most of them. In fact, the political aspects of the mod are pretty bland and not as dynamic as they perhaps should be. Still, the mod is a very enjoyable experience overall and no matter what country you are playing, it won't take too long for you to immerse yourself with each country, its history and its characters, most of whom have their unique descriptions and backstory, which you can read while playing. In terms of performance, the mod works pretty well, but I have noticed some slowdown from the 2019 version. This is probably due to all the new content that was added and that we also had two DLCs released for the game, all of which put more stress on the base game. This type of performance issue is really out of the hands of the developers, since inevitably as more content is put into the mod, the harder it will be for the game to handle. One possible solution to this would be to split the new content into other sub-mods as kind of content packages for various countries or regions, which could reduce some of the pressure from the base mod. Nevertheless, if your vanilla game runs fine, you should be able to get a stable experience from the mod. I did not encounter any crashes while playing and the performance issues were minor. In terms of sounds, there isn't much new in the mod, I haven't encountered any changes, but the mod does feature new music, which can be further enhanced by downloading the various music submods available on the Steam Workshop. These music packs greatly enhance the experience and I highly recommend you try them. It is good to see Kaiserreich improve with time. The mod has really set a high bar for how immersive Total Converter mods for Hearthrime 4 can be and the execution is excellent. 
I have no doubt the mod will keep getting better and better in the future and I can't wait to see future releases and highly recommend you try the mod if you haven't already. If you enjoy these type of immersive character driven mods, you may also like Equestria at War. Check out my review of that mod in the upper right corner of the screen. If you found this review helpful, give it a like so that others can see it as well, and subscribe to the channel to be notified of future reviews. Did you play Kaiserreich? What nation did you play and what nation would you recommend to try? Please let us know in the comments. As always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.